Welcome to Citygate Church Online. We are so glad you could join us. This message was recorded at our last Sunday service. We hope it blesses you. Today we're going to turn to Isaiah 54. Uh, that's where we are for a number of weeks, few weeks. Isaiah 54. From verse 9, we've already read, enlarge, lengthen, strengthen, stretch out. You shall expand. Amen? Yes. Look at someone say, enlarge. Yes. You shall expand. Yes. And even in that, your descendants will inherit the nations. Kids again, yeah? And then we found out over the last couple of weeks that we have a glorious high call. And that glorious high call is because God, the creator of all things, the redeemer, the Lord of hosts, says, I have called you. And when you know you're called, you can, you can have a confidence on the inside that God knows us, He's called us, actually before the foundation of the earth. To be holy, to be blameless, to be victorious. That's the calling on our lives, to be Jesus to the people around us. Yeah. Oh Lord, will you come to my office? Well, why don't you walk in there and bring him? Yeah. <laughs> we got a calling. Yeah. So today we're gonna carry on from verse nine, it says, for this is like the waters of Noah to me, says God. I have sworn, I've given my word. I've promised. That's the strongest thing that God can do. Because if God says it and he doesn't do it, then God is a liar. And we know Satan is the father of lies. That would not be a good position for the father to be in. God has said it, I have sworn. By myself, I have sworn. We find in Hebrews, we find in the old, by myself. You see, if I make a promise and somebody says, how do I know? Well, I need to go something with, you know, to, that has more authority than me and say, that's my guarantor. That's my guarantor. He's bigger than I am. I'm just having to go through, you know, something and I've had to see, well, that's the one who's made the promise and that's the guarantor. So even if the one who's made the promise doesn't do what he says, there's a guarantor who will. There is no one greater than God. He's got nowhere to go. <laughs> There's no heavenly bank account where he gets his authority from. No, he is the authority. He is the word made flesh. So he says, you know, a policeman will say, in the name of the law, I can declare this, I can arrest you. Well, God can't go to in the name of anything else because it's his own name. By myself, I have sworn. Now, every word in this is the word of God. You can stand on any of it. Every word, by his stripes, you were healed. You can stand on it. God has said it, I believe it. That settles it. But there are times when God wants to particularly highlight the fact, I'm promising this. So if he does that, I mean, he could say over every verse in the book, I have sworn. Over every promise, I've sworn. But he doesn't because we just understand that every promise of God is in the name of the Father. So we can stand on all of it. But where God specifically, specifically says, I'm giving my word on this. It's like a double whammy. It's like, well, I promised, but I'm telling you I promised. 
Just in case you don't get it, I promised. Just in case you don't trust that you can trust anything I say, you can trust this one. You get in the sense of what this is about here. I have sworn that I would not, sorry, just as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth. So I have sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. Now, if we were to go back to Genesis, we would find a covenant there that God makes with Noah and actually God makes with the whole earth. And he puts a rainbow. Let's get the rainbow back, guys. I don't believe we ever lost it. It's God's rainbow. And it's a covenant rainbow. It's not a gender rainbow. It's a covenant rainbow. And it's the promise of Almighty God for redemption in the earth and for protection in the earth. It's the promise of God. You will see the rainbow and you will remember. You see, the devil is scared of what we remember. You see, if you see a rainbow and you think LGBTQ, or if you see a rainbow and you think trans, your memory needs to be transformed today. Hello. I see a rainbow and I think of the promises of God. I think of the flood of Noah receding and Noah giving an offering and God saying, bless you, fill the earth, subdue the earth, have have dominion over all the earth. That's what I think. If you think of something different, then please, you need to renew your mind because the devil is winning. In your mind. I don't know where that came from either. When God promised, I will never flood the earth again. Never. I'll never do it. And this is a covenant. If you read Genesis, you read covenant, 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 all the way through. This is my covenant. I will remember my covenant. You will remember the covenant. This is the rainbow of the covenant. This is the sign of the covenant. I mean, it's as if God bombarded Noah with covenant mentality in one encounter. And it's my prayer today that we are bombarded and impacted and inspired by the covenant of God in this place today. When he said to Noah, I will never do this. I swear by myself, put a rainbow in the heavens to remind you and to remind me, God says, that I will never flood the earth again. So now we come to Isaiah 54 and God says, I see these words in exactly the same way as I promised about the flooding of the earth and the rainbow in the heavens. Wow. He said, this is on the level of my covenant with Noah. This is as powerful to me and as important to me as my promise that I would never flood the earth again. See, sometimes, I don't know about you, I can be guilty of, You know, I open the Word of God and I read it and sometimes I just don't believe what I'm reading. See, faith is nothing that just operates in your brain, it operates in your heart. That's where it's got to come from. A conviction on the inside, not a, oh, I believe it. Anybody can say, I believe it. The devil believes it. The devil believes this stuff. He believes it all hasn't got an ounce of faith because faith comes from the Holy Ghost. Can only come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. So we got to get in this until we know it. We know that we know that and there's something of conviction on the inside, not just something subjective and changeable in our thinking because your thinking can change. Do you remember when you used to, wear? well, I can remember when I used to wear flares. You couldn't see my feet. I was reminded of that last week. Couldn't see my feet. And then the world changed to straight trousers. 
I remember I was about 18 years old, 17, 18, 16, 17. I, I took a long time to change. Probably I was about 14. But I refused. I couldn't buy the trousers I wanted to buy anymore because I was still in my flares and my aftans and my caftans and my smoking dope and my pot and my little joss sticks and whatever else. The world had changed, but I didn't. Why? Because I thought everybody looks stupid. <laughs> Straight trousers, they look stupid. It took a couple of years, and then I thought I looked stupid. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it amazing how something that you are so committed to can transform just because the stuff around you changes? Yeah. Don't tell me you can't like the praise and worship we play here. Just listen to it enough, you'll like it. <laughs> Amen. 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 This is like the waters of Noah to me. I promise something. And today we're going to lay hold of that promise. You're getting this? In Jesus' name. We're going to lay hold of this promise. <laughs> Verse 10, for the mountains shall depart and the hills will be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant, oh, there it is. My covenant of peace. Everybody say covenant of peace. Covenant of peace. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. Oh, you afflicted one, tossed with tempest, not comforted. Behold, open your eyes and look. Behold. I will lay your stones with colourful gems, lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles rubies, your gates of crystal and your walls precious stones. All of your children, come on, shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness, you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. You shall not fear. And from terror, you'll be far from terror. It shall not come near you. Amen. Oh, well, Pastor Jay, I just don't know if I can believe that because terror's come near me. Well, this is where we got to take what we believe and change what is our reality. But it can only happen as we have a conviction on the inside that God has sworn. And this is as strong as the flood of Noah and the promise that God would never do it again. God is saying, terror shall not come near you. You shall not fear. Oppression shall not come near you. Oh, well, Pastor Jay, I'm in the middle of oppression. Well, then you need a conviction. Because you can take your, con your faith conviction on the inside and transform your circumstances. Yes. Yeah. But I just don't know, that's just not my reality. Can you see the battle I'm in right now? Because yeah. God says, this is as strong to me as the promise that I will never flood the earth and I even created rainbows to establish that fact, that truth. And this promise that I've just read is equal in God's commitment scale. Is this, yeah. this coming across? Very good. Yeah. I love this passage. It sort of reminds me of Psalm 91. <laughs> Psalm 91. Blessed are those. Empowered are those. Protected are those who dwell under the shadow of the wings of Almighty God. From that position, no matter what is surrounding us, we know that God is covering our lives. 
covering. Today I want to speak on our covenant of peace. Our covenant of peace. We have a covenant of peace. Individually and corporately, we have a covenant of peace. Now, if you've been in Citygate for more than five minutes, you'll know that word peace is the word shalom. It's the word shalom. Uh, Such a powerful word. Such an incredible word. The word shalom means so many things. It means peace. It means rest. Have we got these? Wonderful. It means goodness, wisdom, security, safety. Can I say pick one if you need it? I suggest you pick them all. Because this is as the waters of Noah to Almighty God, covenant of peace. This is our covenant. This is it. This is our covenant. I've got a covenant that says God is my wisdom. God is my security. God is my rest. God is my prosperity. God is my safety. God is my good journey. I need some of them. God is my health. God is my goodness. God is my wholeness. God is my nothing missing, nothing broken. Almighty God has sworn by himself that he will deliver this into our lives. Lots of photographs being taken right now. I must have really been looking good this morning. (laughs) Oh, it's this. I'll get out the way then, shall I? The shalom of God. We have a covenant of shalom. Remember, if God fails, he's a liar. Because when God promises and then he confirms it with an oath, with a covenant, Hebrews tells us two things in which it is impossible for God to lie. We have strong consolation. Direct quote. Two things, the promise and the oath. I said it and I've covenanted it. Impossible for God to lie. Yeah, and I'm not taking this out of context. Oh, but Pastor Jay, he's talking about Israel. Yes, he is talking about Israel. But we are grafted into their vine. Can I just make that abundantly clear? Israel is not grafted into the church. The church is grafted into Israel. Scripture, straight New Testament Scripture. We have a covenant with Almighty God. This covenant affects us. Just keep that up there. I love this. This affects me spirit, soul, physically, emotionally, mentally. It affects me financially. It affects me relationally. It affects my children. It affects my marriage. It affects every part of my life. This is not just a spiritual, you know, theology. This is a reality That is to impact our lives. Isaiah chapter nine, verses six and seven. I won't quote the whole scripture, but the Bible says, wonderful counselor, almighty God, everlasting father, that Jesus is the prince of shalom. Prince of shalom. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Government and peace. That's right, isn't it? Of the increase of his wisdom. There's no end to the increase of Almighty God. Romans 14. Oh, you're just all in the Old Testament today. No, Romans 14. The kingdom of God is righteousness, shalom, and joy. In the Holy Ghost. 
righteousness, peace, and joy. Speaking of the same peace. I know Shalom is Hebrew and we're in the Greek in the New Testament. I get that. But it's speaking of the same thing. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is why as a church, we will always, always make room for the Holy Spirit. Because everything about us is in the Holy Spirit. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're anointed by the Holy Spirit. We're taught by the Holy Spirit. We're convicted by the Holy Spirit. We're led by the Holy Spirit. He prays with us when we don't know how to pray in the Holy Spirit. We sing in the Holy Spirit. We pray in the Holy Spirit. Dear God, don't leave the Holy Ghost out. Don't leave Him out. Don't leave Him out. Because everything you are that's worth anything is in the Holy Spirit. Grace is in the Holy Spirit. Faith is in the Holy Spirit. Joy is in the Holy Spirit. Love and compassion is in the Holy Spirit because these things are all the fruit of the, come on, the Holy Spirit. So we have a covenant with God and that covenant is a covenant of peace. Jesus came to give us peace in every area. Now, I can't get away from it. I don't want to get away from it because this has got to be reality where we live. He said, you know what? Mountains around you. There's going to be earthquakes around you. When it says, though the mountains may be removed, he's not talking about when we speak to them. It's saying earthquakes. There's a mess around your life. It's as if there's earthquakes. It's as if this is falling about, and the, you know, great things are opening up. What a mess around my life, Pastor Jay. <laughs> well, all of us are like the rest of us, guys. Because we're in the world, but we're not of the world. In this world, you will have trouble. But be cheerful. Because I have overcome the world that you're surrounded by. Why? Because we have a covenant of peace. We're surrounded by turmoil, but God's kindness. Oh man, you need to come to academy and we get into this stuff. Kindness, the Hebrew word chasid, which means the covenant commitment of Almighty God. Chasid, it's sometimes translated kindness. Sometimes it's mercy. Sometimes it's just covenant. The chasid of God is the mercy of God. It's the covenant commitment of Almighty God that even though the mountains are going to be removed, my kindness, we just read it, my kindness, my covenant kindness, my hasid, my commitment, my covenant of peace will never be removed. It's not going anywhere. God's not going anywhere and His Word's not going anywhere. What about this one? Storms will come. Tossed by the tempest. Storms will come. Storms will come. But God will bring us through the storm and adorn us with precious stones. You know, we sometimes hear people say, Pastor Joe, I'm just going through hell. Well, don't stay there. Keep going through. Keep going through. Come out the other side and you'll be studded with diamonds and rubies. It's just what we, we just read this. Tempest, toss, don't worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover you with precious stones. You don't feel like it when you're in the, in, the, in the tempest. In the storms, I've been in some storms. Man, I've been in some storms. Last thing you think about at that time is I'm covered with diamonds. <laughs> Till I'm covered in, I don't know what I'm covered in. I'm just, just covered, <laughs> soaked through. But keep your eyes on the, on the out. Tempest, not comforted. I'm going to bring you out. And there's going to be rubies and emeralds and sapphires and diamonds and crystals. Upon your life, you're going to look absolutely stunning. 
you are not going to look like what you've been through. Come on, guys. Lay hold of this today. You are not going to look like what you've been through. In fact, you're going to you know, give your testimony and gonna, people are going to say, you're lying. You're lying. Where's the, where's the mess then? Well, I come through it. Yeah, you don't look like you were in poverty. Yeah, you got a lot of diamonds on you. Well, that's my God, because I've got a covenant of peace. Come on, faith is gonna lay hold of this today. Because as we lay hold of this, we can do something with our life. Storms will come. We know, you know, the New Testament, peace be still in the middle of the storm. In this, he says, your battlements are gonna be strengthened. Your boundaries will be secure. Your gates are gonna be unshakable. God will keep your family. All your children will be taught the Lord. Might look like turmoil, might look like tempest, but you're coming out on top. Invest, get the diamonds in there, get the rubies of God's Word in there, get the promises of God declared over your family and they're gonna come out knowing the Lord, taught of the Lord. Great is the peace, great is the shalom. You're gonna bring your kids out into this just simply because you refuse to give up. You refuse to quit. Bring your kids into this. Oh man, I am exploding on the inside with this stuff today. I've got to get on. So what do I need to do to establish this? Well, it's already established because God has already said, I've sworn. I've sworn, I've promised. But everything that we have as a promise, we gotta partner with. We've got to partner with it. We don't just sit back and say, well, where is it then? We gotta partner with this because faith is the connector. We gotta partner with this. So just three points today, very quickly, very simply, but I pray to God that this is a revealed word on the inside of each one today. I'm laying hold of it for me. Number one, we prioritize partnership. We're in this together. We're in this together. I think of Psalm 133. We were at a conference the other day and I heard somebody talk on Psalm 33 and it's, it's still ringing in my ears, my heart. I've preached on unity for 34 years. In fact, talked about it before then. It's where God commands the blessing. It's where we dwell together in unity. You see, the success of the early church was because they were one. Quite simply, they all gathered, they all gave, they all prayed, they all had the bread and the wine, they all prayed with one accord, with one voice, they all worshipped, they all served. There was this all thing. Now I get, when you are a minority, you gotta stick together. Hello? If there's only 120 of you, you better be a very solid 120. If there's only 3,000 of you in the world, you better be so stuck together like glue that nothing can divide you. I love the fact that a, you know, a third of the world call themselves Christians today or whatever the number is. But I would love to see a unified body. I'd love to see it. Because I'm not talking about church attendance. I'm talking about partnership. We are partners together of the grace of life. 
We are partners together as the body of Christ. I mean, if we're not, let's just chop off a hand here and chop off a leg there. And when Tim was saying sponsoring the youth earlier, and he said, you, can, you know, I thought he was about to say, you can sponsor half a child. And I thought, which, which half am I going to sponsor? I'll sponsor an arm. I'll send an arm up there. Well, we can add an arm and another arm and a leg and a torso and a head and a couple of ears and feet and whatever and get the whole body there. If we do what we do, the whole body works together. That's in every part. You see, I am more a Christian than I am a white guy. I am more a Christian than I am a man. I am more a Christian than I am a husband. My identity is son of God. And my identity is your brother. Your brother. You can't choose your family. You're born into it. There's so much I could say on that. You're born into it. We are born into the body of the Christ. We are in this together. We are committed together. I heard somebody say this the other day. Just imagine, the leaders were there when we were here. Just imagine if Peter had walked with another couple of people on the water. Promise you this, he wouldn't have sunk. They would have said, keep looking at Jesus. Just a thought. Everybody say prioritize partnership. Look at at least three or four people say, we're in this together. Online, we're in this together. We're in this together. Number two, remember our covenant of peace. Remember. Remember, 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 remember. Remember. I've talked a lot last week about forgetting. Forget what lies behind. Forget, forget, but do you remember in the first, do you remember in the first session, I said, so often we forget what we should remember and we remember what we should forget. You with me today? We gotta forget what lies behind, but we gotta remember our covenant peace. Our covenant of peace. Remember it. When your brain's going mad, it's gonna fail, you're gonna die. Just go, no, I shall not die but live and I'll declare the word of the Lord. Remember your covenant of peace. The covenant of peace will never be removed from you. Yeah, but I don't know how we're gonna come through. Yeah, stop declaring you don't know how we're gonna come through and start saying, I know whom I have believed and I know he is able to keep that which I've entrusted to him. Remember, look at someone say, remember Remember. your covenant of peace. What does that mean to us today? 1 Corinthians 11, I've received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. You've got it in front of you today. We're gonna receive the bread and the wine now. He took bread and he, after he had given thanks, Father, we give you thanks for the power of the broken body of Jesus Christ, the stripes upon his back, the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we give you thanks that you have said, this is as the waters of Noah to you, that you will never remove your covenant of peace. We thank you for it, that in the middle of the tempest, you are our diamond. In the middle of the earthquake, you are our stability. We give you thanks, Lord God. And he broke it. Take off the top layer there. If you need gluten-free, just quickly grab it. And take out the bread. Let's hold it up, guys. Let's hold it. This is this is not this is just a wafer, but it is a sign of a covenant. Is it like a rainbow? This is the covenant of shalom right now. People doing this all over the world. And he broke it. He did that because he was sharing it out. We've already done that. You've each got a piece. And he said, what did he say? This is my body 
that is broken for you. Can I say for your shalom? Do this in remembrance of me. And who is he? Prince of Peace. Let's eat together now. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup. This is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes again. Let's drink. God gets right in the middle of this meal. This moves God. This moves God. Right now, it's as if we're having a, can I put it in 21st century language, a business lunch with God. You said it. You said it. Covenant of peace. Well, we've just, we've just done what Jesus said to do. First and foremost, of course, it's about the new birth and the remittance of sin. But in equally, in the covenant of peace that we have, and Jesus is the Prince of Peace, so the new covenant is the covenant of peace. The fullness of it. In the covenant of peace. We focus on it. God gets in the middle of it. It's the most powerful spiritual moment that a believer can have. And my last point is, and we're already doing this, the spirit of faith in this place is so powerful. We got to receive by faith God's provision of abundant life. First and foremost, that's the new birth. Let's not make any confusion about that. He's being born again. He who has received the Son has received life, the Word of God says. But I love the fact that that life, that shalom, that abundant life, that overflowing life is very practical in our lives. Psalm 105, and He brought them out with silver and gold. This is slaves coming out of oppression. Silver and gold, there was not one feeble person among the tribes. Why? Because God's a God of the covenant of peace. He's the God of more than enough. As we set our eyes on Him again today, Haggai 2, for thus says the Lord of hosts, once more I'm gonna shake everything. See in the dry land, shake the nations, though the mountains shall depart and there's tempest around, don't worry about it because they're gonna come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple, just lay hands on your head right now. I will fill this temple. I will fill this temple. He may be a spoken about an old temple, physical temple, but now we are the temple of peace. We are the temple of shalom. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I will fill this temple. Say, God will fill this temple with His glory says the Lord of hosts, and the glory of this latter temple, the glory that shines in the face of Jesus Christ has shone in these earthen vessels, the temple of Almighty God. The same glory, New Testament quote, that shines in the face, and we've seen that, His face is like the sun in the full noonday strength brighter than the sun, has shone in this temple. Why? Because the glory is going to be greater. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater, says the Lord of hosts, the captain of the army. And in this place, I will give peace, shalom. This gives us victory over our enemies. 
I declare victory today in Jesus' name. I declare it. I prophesy it out. I declare it. The covenant of shalom shall never depart from you. You have victory over your enemies. You have victory over every oppression. You have victory over the tempest, the torment. You have victory in Jesus' name over the sickness, over the disease. You have victory. Why? Because He is the Prince of Shalom. Hallelujah. You have victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 23. Let's all stand to our feet. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over surely. Hasid, Hasid, covenant love, covenant kindness. Hasid, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Let's all, now we're gonna say this, but let's all declare this verse with faith. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of, of the Lord, the house of peace, the house of peace, the house of Shalom, the temple of Shalom the temple of greater glory, the temple of healing, the temple of freedom, the temple of joy. The, yeah, let's sing it out. Come on, we're gonna thank God today for His faithfulness all my life. All my life you have been It's the covenant of peace today. sworn. You're laying hold of it today. God has sworn. Father, we thank You today. This is as the waters of Noah to You. That we have a covenant with peace, a covenant of peace with the Prince of Peace. And we thank You for it. And we walk in it. And we share it with others. In Jesus' mighty name. Can we thank Him one more time today? Hallelujah. With every eye closed and every head bowed, if you're here today and you know you are outside of the covenant of peace that we're talking about. What do you mean outside it? Well, either you've got a covenant or you haven't got one. And the covenant of peace is for those who have received Jesus as Lord and Saviour. That's the moment you get the contract. That's the moment. And if you're here today and you say, you know what, I've never received Jesus as Lord. Never received Him as Lord of my life. I may think I'm a Christian. I believe it all, but is He Lord? Is He Lord? Is He, we sang earlier, He's the master. He's the boss. If you're here today and you know you've got to receive, you can't leave this place without receiving Jesus as Lord, knowing that if you were to die today, you are going straight to be with Jesus in the presence of Almighty God. It's settled by the blood of Jesus, but it's got to be received by faith. Or perhaps you're here today and you say, Pastor Jay, I've got to come back to God. I've got to come back to God. I'm not living like a Christian. Now, I'm not talking about we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. We're all on a journey. But you know that you say you're a Christian, but really you're not reading your Bible. You're not praying outside of this. You're really living a different life. And you know you've got to come back to God with every eye closed and every head bowed. If that's you today in either of those two situations, I'm gonna ask you to do something bold and confident and that is to lift your hand in this auditorium right now, please. Hallelujah. 
as I look around. Lift it high so I can see. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let's all pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, thank You that You love me. You've demonstrated Your love by sending Your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross to give me life. I receive You, Jesus, as my Lord, my Saviour, my friend. I turn away from the way I've lived, independent from You. And by the help of Your grace and Your power, I'll never be the same again. I receive eternal life. I receive my covenant of peace. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Come on, let's celebrate today, shall we? Hallelujah. Thanks for watching. We hope this message blessed you and encouraged you for the week you have ahead. If you enjoyed what you saw, why not subscribe for more content? And we'll see you next time.